the Gowanus Canal on Brooklyn's western waterfront, a historic industrial waterway running 1.8 miles into the borough with no outlet. Mayor Bloomberg is campaigning right now, and I'm seeing ads of him going on roofs in, in, in Brooklyn and saying, you know what I see when I look on these roofs? I see opportunity for green, you know. If he wants to be the green mayor, if he wants to plant a million trees, why doesn't he want to finally comprehensively clean up this canal? New York City has promised to clean up the Gowanus Canal before. In 1867, the New York legislature authorized the construction of the Gowanus Canal. Dredging of the waterway concluded in 1869, but by 1888, as a result of industrial pollution, a newspaper had called the polluted canal a blot on America's civilization. In 1890, the city drilled the Bond Street sewer pipeline to ameliorate sewage flow into the canal. It was declared an engineering blunder and was soon useless and abandoned. In July 1911, a flushing tunnel was constructed to bring fresh seawater from the buttermilk channel into the canal. But by 1960, the city was purposefully polluting the canal with truckloads of chlorine to ameliorate the smell from the stagnant waterway. In 1962, the flushing tunnel failed and was left abandoned until 1999, when the area became of interest to developers. Here we are standing in the historic Gowanus Estuary. Across the way used to be Fort Box, one of the forts that uh, Washington had set up in 1776. This putrid, uh body of water. At once been the whole uh, industrial waterway, the most busiest one in, in the United States. And the result of all that, of course, is the pollution that we have today. The site is the site currently um, being proposed for a Superfund cleanup to restore the historic estuary here. And as you can see, the site has been long industrialized. And the Army Corps has done core borings throughout the sediments, have come up with heavy metals, mercury, leads, cadmium. Superfund is the instrument the government uses to clean up toxic waste sites comprehensively. What did we find out there in the canal? We found polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, up to 4.5% in the canal sediments. We also found PCBs, or polychlorinated biphenyls, of up to about 43 parts per million. We also found heavy metals, arsenic through zinc, we pretty much found them all. Volatile organic compounds, traditionally these are associated with solvent type materials, the entire length of the canal. The canal area had two, three um, coal gasification sites in and around the area, which had dumped a lot of coal tars. Is the canal going to be cleaned up? piecemeal by, by private industry if and when they get uh, a part of it and get in charge of it, or is it going to be cleaned up once and for all by the federal government? There are two basic issues involved in healing the canal. There's the toxic mud in the channel and the toxic soil in the properties surrounding the canal. Then there's the sewage that overflows into the canal when it rains. The Superfund process advocated by the EPA is comprehensive and ongoing and unbeholden to the whims of any particular political agenda. The Bloomberg administration, for reasons unknown, proposes that it can clean up the canal sooner with corporate partnerships and gentle persuasion. But their logic is fuzzy. It's Superfund alternative approach. It's the mechanism that uh, the city of New York has suggested that we use. It has been used in a number of instances. It is almost always used when there is one or a very small number of responsible parties, but it's by no means legally limited to that. Superfund, whether it's litigated or not, is a compulsory process, and big, well-funded companies don't like to be told what to do when it's going to be caught, when it's going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, and by the way, there are a lot of potential companies here that are up to 150 or more. Why should we trust a developer to clean a canal? And why should we trust the city? We believe fundamentally that uh, a voluntary process is going to be faster than a Superfund process. If parties willingly come to the table, uh, that the work just inherently will move faster. What exactly are these incentives that you're talking about for voluntary, for partners, potentially responsible partners, to voluntarily come to the table for millions of dollars, or in some cases, tens of millions of dollars to clean up their sites. What, what exactly is that incentive? And Walter, if you could address that too, what your, because of your experience with Superfund. Is there anybody who's still operating the machine? It adds a layer of complexity, and we don't dispute that at all. Um, one thing that the city certainly has uh, done, and we found that other parties are willing to do, is maybe 
accept an added layer of complexity if it means that you don't have to bear as much of the cost of something. Their complex plan relies on yearly funding from Congress in the form of earmarks. The period of time of uncertainty will be exaggerated that way if you have to depend upon congressional funding on a year by year by year by year basis. You'll never know whether the funding is coming next year or next year or next year. And they admit that it will be a lengthy process. Now that takes time. It takes time to identify the parties. It takes time to work with Congress. But if elected to a third term, Mayor Bloomberg will only serve until 2014. The city's only guarantee is that if they fail to meet the EPA standards, the EPA can always take over and fix the canal to federal standards. And then, at the end of the day, if it doesn't come through, you have everything you need to start the remedial work, and the EPA can simply list the site. The more complex an already very complicated matter becomes, the more likely it is to be fragile or brittle or susceptible to some kind of failure along the way. If you start out with one process and use that process all the way through, you're likely to get to the end line, to the, the goal line, uh, a little faster, a little bit more efficiently than if you have these multiple moving parts. Whenever any two agencies work together, there are frictions and there are difficulties. Uh, the problem of, hand, of, of sort of changing horses in the middle of the stream is one that also concerns me a little bit. It is going to be in that category now forever. Then there's the sewage that flows into the canal when it rains. This is a sick canal. It needs to be treated, it needs to be cleaned. CSOs are combined sewer overflows. Gowanus Canal has 14 CSO points. Here for the Gowanus area, we have a watershed that reaches all the way to the top of the Hill Park Slope, all the way to Prospect Height, and to the top of Cobble Hill. That system gets overfilled and stressed out during rain conditions, and all the excess is then dumped into the canal, bringing the pathogens. What you would find in Mumbai, India, what you would find in the, 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 the deepest slums of the, of the darkest third world countries, we have right here in downtown Brooklyn. Everything from live gonorrhea, to cholera, to typhus that still exists in that water today. Since the EPA takes no role in changing the flow of sewage, that responsibility falls to the city government. We're reducing the combined sewer overflows by approximately 34 percent in the Guanas Canal. The city has already pledged to dredge the flushing tunnel and refurbish the pumping station. And they plan to divert about one third of the sewage that presently flows into the canal when it rains. But city plans for a future of high-rise housing on the watershed surrounding the canal, including 17 skyscrapers and a sports arena, would add considerably to the pollution they admit will not stop. So the city has no plan to stop polluting the canal with raw sewage when it rains. Can a city that has failed repeatedly to attend to its environment be trusted to see their alternative plan through successive administrations and years of begging Congress and suing potentially responsible parties? We thought our politicians are supposed to really help us here. Or should a federal agency with a proven track record of restoring toxic sites to habitable conditions be entrusted with a comprehensive cleanup? The only people who really don't want this to happen are those with financial interests, such as developers. We're being offered a chance. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's better than anything we've ever been offered. We are in the midst of a 90-day comment period with the EPA ending July 8th. Go to superfungawanas.org. It's a one-stop deal. You go there, both links are there. Please go. Telling personal stories, adding photographs, or just saying, I want the canal cleaned up. You don't have to live in the Gowanus area to do this. Let's take the cleanup process out of the hands of proven polluters and put it in the hands of proven cleaners. Send your comments to the EPA website and superfund the Gowanus. To quote Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has.